Okay, so now we're getting into the more complex uh, calculations or the questions. Study the following circuit diagram. The battery has an EMF of 13 volts. What that means, um, EMF, electro... Um, motive force electromotive force means it is the energy that causes a current to flow okay so 13 volts mean we are 13 volts means that every coulomb of electrons have 13 joules per Coulomb. That's how much energy every electron um, group has when it comes out there. In other words, if we measure the voltage across these two ends, that is what we call the EMF. The voltage is the um, the difference in in the poten the pen potential difference over these two points. Okay, um, and if we look at this diagram. They tell us and no internal resistance. Internal resistance would mean that uh, that there are resistance in the battery itself as well as in the wires that will cause a different reading over the voltmeter than it would um, actually in the uh, the total uh, voltmeters in the circuits. Okay, so all meters are ideal and have no effect on the circuit. That means ideal resistors mean that the amperes, because it's in series, okay, it's not using any energy. It has such a low resistance that the energy uh, consumption is. Um, uh, you can deny that. Then the voltmeters. The voltmeters have such high resistance that when the uh, current wants to split okay there would hardly any current go in that direction okay so again they won't cause the current to split like this voltmeter here it's it's not now part of this question but this voltmeter here it, it would not cause any of the well it's so little that it is negligible negligible okay so uh, that's what ideal resistors mean or um, ideal meters and they won't have any effect unless of course I put them in wrong for example if I put an ammeter an ideal ammeter here then all of the current will go through there because there's no resistance why would I take a path with any resistance if there's a path with no resistance to take okay so um, and if I put a voltmeter in here its resistance is its uh, energy consumption is so high that it will use all of the energy while the rest will get so little energy they won't even work okay uh, but that's going off the, off the point look at this look at this sketch now this diagram so here we have our electrons flow flow from negative to positive our current flow from positive to negative so our current comes through here let's follow the current there we go through our ammeter and here we can split up and I just want you to notice here this voltmeter here where is it measuring the current it is measuring the current sorry not the current the potential difference between this point and between that point okay now over what is it measuring the current over which uh, it, so voltmeter is either over resistors or it's over a battery and you can see this one yes it seems like it is somehow over the resistors but actually if you just look at at the way it is and I, I really struggle to explain this but this voltmeter here is just this voltmeter with these ends moved notice if I if I were to draw it from here it would be the same voltmeter than if I drew it from here and if I just now continue to move these legs as long as I don't cross a resistor I've not changed any reading on that voltmeter whatsoever so look at that as I just move these ends to eventually be connected to that end okay this is the same voltmeter it's in parallel over the battery so let me take this off because I think the sketch might become very ugly at some point okay so 
uh, that is the uh, voltmeter here then we see our current continues through here and here it's got an option of either going this way or going st straight on now as long as this is open it can't go straight on because there's there's not resistance in here there's a stop okay you can't if the if any goes this way they they can't go anywhere so the only path to go to get back to the battery would be to go in here so now if we go in here once again I can choose here to either go in that direction or to go in that direction problem going in this direction is there's not a closed circuit if I do go in this direction I'll just end up going vrr. okay well yeah let's say we go there vrr, and then we just get back here again so it's not a closed circuit we don't get into a, 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 a path that will take me back to my battery so uh, there would be no current flowing in this direction if there is it would be so quick that because it will immediately go and get stopped so we go back in this direction here once again I can split up going in this direction or going forward the reason why I will not go in this direction is because of the high voltage but also because the current is flowing actually from this direction into that direction but once again this this high resistance very little current is coming from there so I'm coming all the way back and so what I want you to notice is that if I look when this is open if I look at this I'm actually having just two resistors in series in other words actually even though there's the option of splitting my current never splits yeah so which means that these two resistors are in series now if we do close this if I were to close this now all of a sudden I do have the option of splitting and uh, and then I've got these two resistors would still be in series with each other but this resistor is in parallel with these two resistors so one thing that that I always suggest is let's replace these resistors that's in series with an imaginary resistor in other words let's talk about the resistance of the branch not necessarily of the resistors um, separately so this branch has a total resistance of 6 ohm and this branch the second branch and once again this is just a voltmeter here even though it looks like that it's splitting it's just a voltmeter reading over this resistor um, so for example I could have drawn it like this okay and so in this second branch so I have two branches when I when I get to this point my current can split here or it can go straight okay if I go here I'll enter into a branch that has a total resistance of six while if I continue here there's only one resistor but the total resistance in the second branch is 15 great that helps me a lot to answer the following questions let's go let's go for it what is the read reader reading on voltmeter v1 when sorry initially the switch is open so if the switch is open then I've got a simple uh, uh, series diagram and I explained already that this voltmeter one is simply the voltmeter reading over the battery and the voltmeter reading out over the battery will be the EMF it will be the electromotive force so since they give me that as 13 volts this will simply be 13 volts the second question what is the voltmeter on V2 the switch is open so as long as the switch is open it means there is simply no current going into the second branch where um, V2 is a voltmeter over um, uh, R3 so it's zero there's absolutely no energy being spent per coulomb because there's no coulombs passing there because so this is zero volts calculate the magnitude of the current through the ammeter okay so here's my ammeter and I want to know how many joules per second so not joules sorry how many coulombs are passing this point every second and that's a very simple calculation actually because 
you'll notice that that the the current passing through here is the current that is coming from the battery so if we follow the current and we get here all of the current coming from the battery is passing through the ammeter it doesn't matter whether the switch is open or closed all of the current is passing through the battery so I'm asked to calculate that and that would be the total current now the total current I should change my colors at some point the total current is equal to the total voltage divided by the total resistance now as long as this switch is open when my current comes through the total resistance are simply these two resistors so let's follow the path okay that switch is open I go okay here's three ohms and three ohms so I'm at six ohms now get back there and I get all the way back to so the total current has passed through only six ohms of resistance the total voltage is also always just the voltage over the battery what is the total energy that the battery supplies for each coulomb of charges so that is 13 volts so it's 13 over 6 which gives me 2 comma 1 7 I think so ampere let me do that on a calculator just to confirm any suspicions so 13 divided by 6 is 2.16666 so I've rounded obviously okay excellent so that means that every second there is 2,17 coulombs of charges passing through the ammeter. Now, next what happens is the switch is closed. So when, when those 2,16 coulombs of charges come here, all of a sudden they now have two options. They can either go up here or they can go straight. They've got those two options. So um, if we go up here, we're going to have six resistance in total if we go straight we're going to have 15 resistance so most will go to the least resist in other words the the current in in the first branch will be higher than the current in the second branch more coulombs will go to this side than coulombs that go straight and uh, if you don't know why then watch the previous videos where I explained that okay so now the switch is closed and they just ask us some some questions how do the readings on the voltmeters compare to each other okay so here we have the the voltmeter here this voltmeter tells me that every coulomb that leaves this um this battery it's actually going in that direction but we'll we'll do the current every coulomb that leaves has 13 joules of energy now when it when it gets to this place where the where the parallel branch is split every coulomb that goes in this direction still has 13 joules of energy and there's going to be two resistors where they have to spend it if we go straight every coulomb still has 13 joules of energy but he's only got one resistor to spend it at which means that th when it's finished here it should have spent all of its energy w and again that simply means that if I were to measure the difference between the energy here and the energy there here it should have zero joules and here it should ha it's it starts with 13 joules so what is the difference between these two points well it's 13 joules for every coulomb 13 joules are spent because when I get here I must have spent all my energy again now for these two these two have the same um, resistance which means they require the same amount of energy every um, uh, every uh, coulomb that comes in here 
has 13 joules but he has to spend some here and some there since they're the same values they're going to spend 6,5 joules here and 6,5 joules there so that when when the when it comes in here if I have a voltmeter over here I will measure 13 joules of energy here but there will only be 6,5 joules left because I've spent 6,5 joules. Now I measure the voltmeter over here. There is 6,5 joules of energy. Every Coulomb has 6,5 joules of energy at this point but um, it spends all of it at that point so 6,5 joules of energy is left so when it gets to this point it's got no joules left and they'd simply just go back to the battery to be charged again with enough energy. I think that makes brilliant sense. So what would be the voltmeter on V1? Again, remember V1 was actually, whether the switch is open or closed, it is the voltmeter over the battery, which means it had a voltmeter of 13 volts. This one here, simply the voltmeter reading over R3 which in this case will have the same voltmeter reading. So hopefully I was able to explain that sufficiently. Voltmeter reading 1 and 2 will be this be the same and the, and the reason can be um, if you were to explain your answer you can do a short explanation of what I just said or you could also just say volt um, the voltage voltage in a parallel branch is equal to the voltage in the over the battery okay how will the reading on the ammeter change? Now that is a good question because the moment I close this, remember when we calculated the ammeter we said it was voltage divided by total resistance and now when closing this I've added a resistor into the system. Have I increased the resistance? Or have I decreased the resistance and here it is it is very important to note that the moment I add a resistor in parallel I am actually decreasing the resistance of the um, of the system let me just prove that to you once again with a little calculation so initially our total resistance was simply simply R1 plus R2 Okay, that was our total resistance. But now, since we have a resistor in parallel, our resistance is calculated with the following. 1 over RT is equal to 1 over, and now I've got two branches. I must take 1 over the total resistance of branch 1 divided by 1 over the total resistance in branch 2. So I'm not going to even use, use values. I'm just going to show you why why this is the case. So if we if we look at this, if we were to do it like this, we would have had um, one over R T is equal to one over, and when the switch was closed, there was only one branch. So if we were to do the calculation the way we do parallel branches, it would look like this. There's still just one branch, so I just have one fraction on the right-hand side. If there's two bra branches, I've got two, two fractions, and it calculates to that. Now, in here, notice that I've got a fraction equal to another fraction. Now, what you need to know is that if I take this fraction... Let, let's say for example, just to illustrate it, I've got 1 over 2. And I get the, that 1 over 2 because I have something like 1 over 1 plus 1. Just as an example. Now, if these two values increase, so for example, if it becomes 1 over 2 plus 2 becomes 1 over 2 plus 2, this is 1 over 
4 but that is for the fraction I still have to tip this value around so in other words if I increase the resistors that are in series if those resistors like let's say I've added another resistor here so that I now have 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 1 I've added a resistor in the one branch then I now have 1 over 3 and 1 over 3 and now when I flip it around to get RT on its own so I just flip this fraction around I get 3 over 1 notice how my resistance have increased by adding another resistor but if I now add a f a, 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 so let me rather show you this even though the fraction decreased in value so I went from having a half to having a quarter a quarter is smaller than a half but when I flip it around two is smaller than four so even though a quarter is smaller than a half if I flip it around four is greater than two now I hope I'm not losing you okay but what I'm trying to show you is that if instead I make my fraction bigger in other words let's say I started with a quarter and I started with a quarter one over and I added another quarter now my fraction quarter becomes a half a quarter plus a quarter is now a half and now if I flip it around my resistor is smaller so I started with a total resistance of four I added another quarter which gives me a half and now when I flip it around I get two oh that's wrong and now my total resistance before is bigger than my total resistance after so what I'm showing you here is the initially I just had this now I'm adding another resistor in parallel which means I'm adding a little fraction which makes 1 over RT just gets larger but if my fraction here gets larger larger the reciprocal the um, changing that fraction around makes the total resistance smaller so I I really I love the maths and it's, it's so beautiful to illustrate so I really hope I didn't lose you but what will happen is that RT my total resistance when I add a resistor in parallel will decrease okay does that mean my current will decrease no because current is inversely proportionate to resistance so if my resistance decreases my current will increase the path to follow is now easier okay I've, I don't just have this path to follow I now have that path to follow as well so there's more there's more options for my um, uh, coulombs to pass which means there's actually less resistance okay hope that makes sense great so what would what effect would it have how will the reading on the ammeter change it will increase because total resistance RT decreases when I add a resist when I add a parallel branch that's what it what it means if I add every branch that I add gives my coulombs more options to travel through which means there's less resistance in total so hopefully that makes sense and helps you to understand thank you very much for watching I know this was a long long video but I do think it's so uh, illustrative of the concepts so I'll see you in the next video where we'll do another example